we will now talk more about the former tool. And in this practice, we will try to turn change this square into this line and then into this longer line with a deformer tool. So let's try to practice with um, beginner practice with importing. So I'm going to delete the stuff that is already in. And now my whole project is clear. Open your folder, um, download a folder, and then you, should, you should see two files. One is called 1.3 texture object, one is called 1.3 guide image JPEG. Now a texture object is the thing that we will work on. So if you import as a texture, then you can move it around, you can shape it around and make your model out of it. And just like last time, that's how we do. However, if you import as a guide image for this time, you will import it as a half transparent layer that is always on top of everything else as your guidance. So guide image is just for your own purpose. It won't show up in your final um, out output image or model, and it's only for your own reference purposes, all right? So it's, pre it's pretty simple. And the properties it has by default is that it has a draw order of 1000 and an opacity of 25%. Now, 25% is kind of low. Originally, the gray is already very light, so you can't really see here. If I change a canvas color to another canvas, uh, to another color like um, uh, probably green, blue, and you can see somewhat the gray actually is not very visible either. So let's keep it white. However, let's try to turn up the opacity and see how it helps us. So I click and drag, and now I can see the gray well, but it's covering my black square because the black square has a draw order of, uh, well, 499, and uh, the background image has a draw order of 1000 when it has full opacity. So obviously this thing will cover this thing. Now let's make the square higher priority uh, in display than this one, then we can work with the square. So we can try to push the square, but however, the maximum amount, uh, the maximum draw order is a thousand. Now both objects are currently at a thousand, however the square is showing up. That's because whenever you have two objects uh, of the same draw order, whichever is on the, it has a higher um, level on this sheet, will have lower priority. So we can see that the guy image is above the sketch.00, which is actually our black square. So the guy image is above the black square, black square on this sheet. However, on the canvas, it is the reverse order that the black square will be on top. So let's do this better. Let's try to make this reference as um, a lower draw order. So let's say 900, all right? So the square is 1,000, there's 900, and now this is perfect. Now let's see, let's, um, I guess we'll now, let's first play around with the square and the dots. So try to click and drag and see what happens if you, if you try to transform this thing. Now you notice that there are some weird kind of mechanic that determines the shape of things. When you thought, you know, the square probably would be always identical or um, in proportion to the outer frame, it, it doesn't. You see, it's because um, internally it sort of created a two triangles right here without telling you. Because Live 2D, like most other 3D softwares, they only work with triangular polygons. That's why we should never, um, we should never import texture with anything other than triangles in the polygons in the texture edit, all right? So what, what should have been done is sort of like this. So now we draw two triangles and you don't see no blue, uh, blue lights anymore or blue lines because those are sort of suggestive lines telling you that, hey dude, you need to make a line here in order to make everything triangular, all right? So if I do this, and these are actually four um, dots, so sometimes it will show, sometimes it doesn't, but 
it should show a blue line suggesting this point to this point so that you make everything balance again. So now I sort of added points, however, I al already distorted my, my square. I could drag it back and sort of manually try to make it square again. Or another method is that you can go, you can click on an object, click on object on the top menu, and then go to revert original shape and original texture size. There you go. Now, now it sort of resets the outer frame of the square and make sure it is identical to this one. So we got this, but today we are trying to work with the former. All right. So let's try to, yeah, let's try to create the former. And actually, let's try to move the square to a better location first because I don't like working with the guide image uh, group. It usually has trouble uh, at some point. So let's move to rough. Rough is fine. And let's also lock the guide image. So so, so you want to click on this uh, blank square right here. When you click on it, you see a lock. And that means you have locked this image or, or this all the thing in this group, which is our reference image. So that now, whenever how you no matter how you click on the canvas, you won't accidentally select it or drag it or move it. And let's go to rough where our black square is. And let's try to create a deformer. Give it a name, call it uh, square uh, DF for deformer. And curved surface, 3x3, three 4x4, three, four four, that's fine. So we got that. Now let's make sure our deformer is currently a parent object of the black square, or else no matter what you do with the deformer, the black square wouldn't matter. All right, so we can test it by moving it around. Okay, the black square moves, so that's working. And you can control Z to back a step and really you know, undo them, the met the, the thing you just you did just now. Or you can click on black square and look at the deformer field and see who the parent is. If it says reference plane, it means that the texture has no parent object. If it's, if you have something else, then that's the one. Currently we have square DF, which is the deformer we just created, and that's just right for us. So let's try to move this down to here. And let's try to make it into a line, sh line shape. Now there you go. So it's sort of is turning into the shape. However, you do notice that there are some fuzziness at the at both edge of this or of the original square for some reason. Now the reason for blurriness in your texture that shouldn't be there because you double double check like if you come here and look at the original texture like there's only like maybe one pixel of grayness but it shouldn't cause so much fuzziness. And whenever that happens, it indicates that you don't have enough polygons to give a high definition uh, deformation. All right. So if you don't have enough polygons, what it does is basically stretching the two dots into this size, where everything in between would um, reshape proportionally, if that makes sense to you. And you can try to fix this by adding more points, either by clicking. Let's try to with let's go with the automatic generate polygon button or um, the divide polygon by four. And as you click on it once or twice, you'll see a lot more triangles. And a pretty nice order too, because originally the overall framework is a nice order, and that's why when it generates by four, it's usually nicer. If you have unbalanced um, or imbalanced uh, framework, then it would the more you generate, the more messed up it would be. All right, so let's get that in. Now it doesn't fix anything for us for now. Um, maybe I'll talk about that in a different episode, but uh, let's go with whatever we have, and that's fine. So we got deformer to move this to move in this shape. Now let's try to take it to it to the lower part. Let's move it here and turn it into this shape. 
as you stretch it, you would see, wow, look at that. Look at that distortion right here. That's a major problem, all right? So this is for lesson 1.3. Um, I'm going to stop here. In the next episode, I'll talk about how do you fix those edges.